Coming at you full fledged, it's your boy Rage Man Rich with another video for y'all, man. Welcome, YouTube. As the 2023-2024 NBA season has concluded, one of the biggest topic topics is who's the best player in the world, expectedly. With that being said, I wanted to share some of my in-season end of season analysis and provide my top 10 players in the league based on what they did this past season so let's get straight into it number 10 we have Jalen Brunson emerging as one of the greater guards in Knicks history Brunson made his first all-star game this past season averaging 28.7 points that's the third highest points per game in franchise history right behind Richie Guerin and uh, Bernard King and he's also averaging Brunson 3.6 rebounds and a career high in assists at 6.7 and from the cherry stripe shooting 84.7% we know his story taking over the team from the up and down Julius Randle who got hurt in late January. This ultimately ultimately led to the Villanova trio leading the Knicks to being seven games away from the Eastern Conference Finals. One game away, I'm sorry. One game away from the Eastern Conference Finals because they went seven games with the Indiana Pacers. Why isn't he higher, you ask? Because the very guard he lost to, which is my number nine, Tyrese Halliburton. Arguably the best pure point guard in the league as he was the league leader in assists in the regular season. Again, he beat Brunson and the Knicks with that great combo of passing and scoring and on the defensive end. Along with that 11 assists, he averaged 20.1 points, 3.9 rebounds, and 1.2 steals. The, end of, the Indiana Pacers made their first Eastern Conference Finals appearance in 10 years. And that was also because the eighth player on my list, Pascal Siakam. The seven-year veteran and NBA champion played 39 games for the Toronto Raptors before being traded to the uh, Pacers, where he played 41 games. This past season, he averaged 21.7 points, 7-point rebounds, and 4.3 assists. With Halliburton as his teammate, he's getting easier looks as his shooting Percentages are the second highest they've ever been. They've ever been in this career, 53.6 percent. Siakam, this whole season was a highly touted trade asset, and again, the Pacers got him, and they uh they benefited on the risk of going to get him, and they made the Easter Conference Finals in result. My number seven, this might surprise you, but it's not surprising at all. It is Giannis Antetokounmpo. The 2021 Finals MVP is officially on the clock. Not because of his regular season output, but rather what he's been unable to do in the postseason since winning the chip. Individually, Giannis finished fourth in MVP votes. He was first All-NBA team, of course, and also became the first player to average at least 30 points. He averaged 30.4 points specifically, shooting at least 60% from the field. He shot 61.1%. This being said, again, that's a record. The big, however, is the fact that he and the Bucks 
have been eliminated around early since that year. 2022, they made it to seven games against the Celtics without Chris Middleton. In 2023, they lost in five games to the Miami Heat after the Greek Freak faced an untimely injury. Lastly, they willingly fired the coach that had them at, at the top in the conference. They were 30 and 13. Willingly trading away perimeter defenders like Grayson, uh, Grayson Allen and uh, Drew Holiday for playoff freezer Damian Lillard. That was the number one contributor to them being knocked out in the first round this season. So, again, Giannis is going to produce, but he got to get off his GM shit. He got to... Uh, you got to stop worried about what coach he has and what player he has and and persevere and transcend all that adversity in regular season like he did in 2021. He got to get it together. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I got him at number seven. My number six is Shea Gilgis Alexander, the real MVP this season. The leader of the greatest young team in league history was the epitome of what an MVP is in terms of individual success on both ends of the court and team output. For example, SGA in his sixth season led the league in 30 point games. He averaged 30.1 points shooting a career high 53 and a half percent from the field at guard that's some steph curry level stuff 5.5 rebounds and dished a career amount of dimes with 6.2 on defense again he was ranked second in steals as well for the franchise they had the coach of the year they won 57 games, the second winningest OK, OKC team in history, uh, excluding the Seattle Supersonics history. So, yeah, this is the second best OKC team in uh, franchise history. And they were a point away from the Western Conference Finals. If you remember, I think uh, in the second round, it was 117 to 116. They lost to the Mavericks. Uh, a missed SGA three-pointer from the uh, left wing. Plus, they just traded Josh Giddy. They just traded Josh Giddy to the Chicago Bulls for Alex Caruso. So, watch out for them running it back. That's definitely happening. So, OKC is running it back. My number six is SGA. Now... This one is quite similar to Giannis. So let's get into it. He He's right here. I have to put him right here. Number five, Nikola Jokic. Love it or hate it. He is the reigning three-time league MVP. And similarly, like SGA, he and the Denver Nuggets lost in seven games in the second round. Another commonality between the Nuggets and the Thunder this past season is the fact they won 57 regular season games. But the main difference to be noticed is the year before OKC. The year before, that what needs that's what needs to be noticed. OKC went 40 and 42 and the Nuggets went 53 and 29. The Joker finished second in MVP votes the year prior to this one. And ultimately, Denver won the NBA title in historic fashion. Simply put, Jokic has been more consistent than SGA up to this point. But like Giannis, he's on the clock. 
He's on the clock. Now, number four, who better than the Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards, while the alpha of the Minnesota Timberwolves and in the face of Adidas did flame out in a Western Conference Finals gentleman's sweep. He was the leader of the franchise's second best year ever. They won 56 games amongst the West's best. And for Edwards, this was a career year he's had to date. 25.9 points, a career high shooting splits, and 5.4 assists in the playoffs. He was the catalyst behind another Kevin Durant sweep and beat again the then defending champs and finals MVP in seven games. So respect goes to him for eliminating two superstars in the playoff run and just his stock rising. So we'll see what AE does next year. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Number three, we get it into the thick of it. Luka Doncic. While the Dallas Mavericks bloom late in the regular season, the Don was exactly that in the entire run. He was the lead leader in points, averaging thirty three point nine, almost at thirty four. I did a video on that earlier. Uh, earlier that the, the in the season about him uh, becoming one of only 10 players to average at least 34. He didn't do it, but he was the lead leader in points at 33.9. Second in assists at 9.8. With a career high in steals at 1.4. Also, percentages from the three-point line, 38.2. And free throw percentage, 78.6. So, Career year for Doncic. While I do personally believe his MVP finalist pick was unjust, the Mavs were the hottest team of 2024. They were the hottest team of 2024. And they went from playing tournament to 50 wins to the NBA Finals. While they got extremely hot with him at the head they flamed out due to their obvious flaws against a smarter and far more consistent team and i've talked about their flaws ad nauseum in previous videos so you all just have to go back to those to watch those to watch to see what those are and how he could fix them and that leads me to my number two, Jalen Brown, the best two in the league, shooting guard and complimentary player. Like in the finals, Brown partially guarded the opponent's best player in the regular season, which led to the Celtics being the best defense. He was the Celtics' second leading scorer while going down, going down 3.6 points from the previous season. Last season, he averaged 26.6 points. This season, he averaged 23 points. His career high field goal percentage, 49.9, and assist average 3.6 happened this year. And it helped them become the best offense also. And now that same formula got him the finals MVP, 25 and 5 averages clutch defense in game in all those games. We know what happened. Finals MVP goes to him. And 
Who's number one? You guessed it. Jason Tatum. Even more of a solid MVP case than SGA. I'll say it again. The best player on by far the best team. 14 more wins than any other team in the league. Three straight, three straight first NBA all-team selections. That's crazy enough. That shows you that he's the best forward in the league. His second best shooting year at 47.1%. 4.9 assist average, career high. The formula for the chip was there the entire time. His scoring average, the scoring average has been around the same. It's been the past couple of years. Last year was his career year. He averaged 30, but they got over that. They got over him averaging 30. This year, he went down right back down to 26.9, right comfortably at 27. But again, he had career years shooting and passing and not too bad of a year defending, leading uh, the best offense and defense. His performance in the finals, we already know, remarkable. Doing the other things while his shot wasn't falling and still leading the series and the team, well, not the series, the team and scoring, the winning team, that is. Seeing the stats afterwards like he's the only player to not win finals MVP, leading the finals in points, rebounds, and assists, and now, conveniently now, percentages matter. Not the optimization of the role you play as the main guy, getting the main attention. So, JB gets it. No disrespect to bro at all. But they really robbed JT of the regular season MVP and finals MVP. That being said, I'm not waiting for the media to say he's a superstar due to accolades, hardware, and I'm not waiting for them to say he's the best in the world. So I'm gonna say he's the best in the world. Number one, best player in the world on my list by far, no question, Jason Tatum. So in conclusion, here are my top 10 NBA players in the league right now. Number 10, Jalen Brown, the leader of the new generation Knicks. Number nine, we got Tyrese Halliburton. He beat Brunson in the playoffs, and he's arguably the best pure point guard in the league. Number eight, Pascal Siakam, his teammate with that trade, the Pacers, made it to their first Eastern Conference Finals in 10 years. Giannis Antetokounmpo had a historic regular season, putting up at least 30 points off 60% from the field and his consistency to make to get his team still in the playoffs. SGA, the real MVP of this of this past regular season and the 30 points and the 30 point game leader. Number five, Nikola Jokic, the reigning MVP. Also got to give him credit for his consistency of making deep playoff runs. He was a game away from making the Western Conference Finals. Number four, Anthony Edwards. Had, he had a career year, and again, he was eliminated superstars. Swept KD, beat the reigning Finals MVP in seven games. Luka Doncic, of course, we know the Luka Magic scoring leader. Finals runner-up, we got to give him credit on that. Jalen Brown, number two, the best two in the league, best shooting guard, best complimentary player, finals MVP, what a performance. And number one, without question, the best small forward in the league, superstar output from beginning to end. Media misfires with not giving him his proper uh accolades and hardware to solidify him as the best player in the world jason tatum that gotta go to him that's my top 10 that's my top 10 i just told you why do you see any of my favorites in here do you see 
Devin Booker? Do you see Kawhi Leonard? No, you don't. Do you see any of the other four superstars? Do you see Kawhi, KD, Braun, and Curry? You don't see them. I'm talking about all the reasons I'm considering. I'm talking about consistency. I'm talking about output. I'm talking about potential. I'm talking about all that. What you do now? What have you done for me lately? That matters. And what you think matters also. So with that being said, what's your top 10? Am I off? Is Jalen Brown the best player in the world? Is Jokic still the best player in the world? Is Jason Tatum the best player in the world? Are you going to wait for the media to tell you who the best player is? You going to wait for the TV to tell you what's reality? Let me know. But before, you got to hit that like button, comment at the beginning and middle and end of that, this video. Share for us to see. Subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I drop. This 10 ain't changing until we see some new things happen next season. So, there it is.